Good morning my dear students. Today we are going to take up an important topic for our discussion and uh, that's what's called as a uh, reproduction. Reproduction is one of the very very important uh, functions of the plants and animals. In fact it is uh, this function which differentiates a living organism from a non-living organism. A living organism is a capable of reproduction whereas a non-living organism cannot reproduce. Particularly when you come to the question of uh, plants, since they are in a very low level of organization, they reproduce very fast and also they proliferate in fact. So we are better using the word propagation rather than reproduction. This reproduction is by different methods in the plants and uh, uh, sexual reproduction, asexual reproduction, vegetative propagation and the different methods of reproduction are seen in the plants. <coughs> so, it's a biological process in which organism gives rise to young one similar to itself. It enables the continuity of the species generation after generation. Genetic variability occurs due to crossing over during the formation of a gametes in sexual reproduction. So, sexual reproduction means genetic variability which is the key word for sexual reproduction. Whereas, in asexual reproduction, the variation will occur due to the mutation. Okay? So, as I was just now telling you, the reproduction is divided into vegetative, asexual and sexual. Now, in our today's class, we are going to discuss uh, only about vegetative propagation. So, we are going to limit only to this area today. Okay. So, vegetative propagation is once again divided into natural and artificial. So, many plants are able to propagate by natural means. The nature has given its a capacity of propagating itself very fast. Now, by utilizing this principle, man has made some methods of propagating the method. So, this method is called as an artificial method. Now, natural method, you have got the roots, stem, leaf, all the organs of the plants are utilized for the propagation of the plants. And of course, Artificial method includes a two, mainly two. It includes a cutting, grafting, layering is also another one. But many times we don't do layering because it could be done only in very few plants. But cutting and grafting is being done predominantly in many plants. So we will be concentrating on that. Okay. So once again coming back to the natural system of uh, propagation, all the uh, organs of the plant as I was uh, telling you, roots, stem and the leaf, all of them are involved in this. Once again, we will go organ by organ. First, we are going to take up the root. So, once again, the root is divided into taproot and adventitious root. The examples are Dalbergia, Morea, Dahlia, Guyava. Guyava, you know, it's a very common plant. Tamil, we call it as a Koya and uh, in English also it is called as a Gujava. Dahlia is nothing but a very common plant. It belongs to the family Asteraceae, a very plant very similar to um, sunflower. Okay, the flower is also very similar to sunflower but it is, a, it is available in many colors. <clears throat> Early morning you could have seen some of the vendors uh, calling as a Dara 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 Poo Dara Poo it's not a Darapu, it's only a Dahlia. Dahlia, they mispronounce it in that way. Okay. So, Dahlia, it's, it's, a, it's also a, uh, the root. Tuber is also very 
beneficial to the human being. So, Dahlia and Guyava, adventitious roots are used for propagation. Dalbergia and Morea, tap root is used for the vegetative propagation. And in the stem, of course, you have got the underground stem, subaerial and aerial. When the stem is below the soil level, you call it as underground. It is divided into rhizome, calm, bulb and tuber. Once again, we are going to discuss about the teach on in a detailed way. So, we will take up the further discussion under the each heading at, at some time. Subaerial modification is divided into runner, stolen, sucker and offset. Aerial modification is divided into bulbils and turion. So, these are the different, I mean, classification about the vegetative propagation in the plants. So, we will discuss another another. <coughs> Now, here you see, you are able to see the uh, asexual reproduction in the case of uh, um, some uh, one cellular organism. See how it is happening. Now, this method is uh, what is called as a binary fission, which may mostly happens uh, in the bacteria. And in the case of the yeast, it is by means of uh, what is uh, called as a uh, budding. For example, if this is the yeast, if it wants to reproduce, then what it will do? It will put forth a bud. Okay. So this is what is called. This is the young one of the yeast. So this is this belongs to this uh, present generation. This is a mother yeast, a daughter yeast. So the yeast multiplies in this way. Now this is the nucleus. The nucleus undergoes uh, a fission. One, half of the nucleus migrates here then a wall is formed here now a daughter is getting severed from the mother so it multiplies in a very very simple method if this is a, a bacterium and this is the nucleus of the bacterium a invagination takes place first then the invagination deepens at the same time what happens this a nucleus also undergoes a dumbbell shaped structure this nucleus comes here this portion comes here and this goes here and now this is a completely closed so you get a two bacteria producer by means of what is called the binary fission this is by means of a body like that <coughs> here the asexual reproduction or the vegetative reproduction the plants are able to reproduce by a very very simple mechanism whereas in the sexual reproduction you see what happens it, uh, it it normally takes place between a male and the female and uh, uh, the animalcules or the plant microorganisms they come together one belonging to the male category another the female category or the plus plus or minus strain what are uh, terminology you can apply you can do it now they come together and then uh, ethanol is established between the two and then the nucleus of the one is fused with the another then it undergoes a meiosis this is how the sexual reproduction is accomplished in the case of the very very simple organisms so uh, asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction takes place in the lower organisms in a very easy method now it can be divided into two types based on the participation of the one or two parents. Asexual type is the production of offspring by a single parent with or without involvement of a gamete formation. Whereas the sexual type is the production of offspring by fusion of a male and the female gametes produced by two parents. Now you see here the participation of the male and the female as a most, this is a key word whereas here it is by a single parent so asexual reproduction means only one parent is involved whereas sexual reproduction means two parents the male and the female are involved okay that makes the difference between the asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction so the union of a male and the female is almost essential for the sexual type of reproduction. Now, 
Yes, asexual reproduction, a single individual is capable of producing offspring which are not only identical to one another but are also exact copies of their parents. So they are genetically identical. So when, a, when an animal or a plant is a producing genetically identical individuals, you are using the term clone there. So it is a producing the clone. Whereas in an asexual, I mean, uh, yes, in a sexual reproduction, clones cannot be produced. They are morphologically and genetically similar individuals. Asexual type is a common in single-celled organisms, as I was uh, telling you, in uh, some very lower organisms like uh, uh, Euglena, Paramecium, and in the case of lower organisms, the plants it is in the Chlamydia, Monas, Pantrina, Eudorina, yeast. In all these organisms, asexual reproduction is taking place. Binary fission. <coughs> this is what I was just now telling you. By budding binary fission, how it is uh, taking place in the um, um, budding in the case of the yeast and binary fission in the case of the bacteria. I was uh, just explaining to you. And now I will just uh, read, read this out to you. Monera and Protista here the binary fission is taking place. Cell division itself is a mode of reproduction here. Due to the unequal divisions of the small buds produced that remain attached to parent cells initially and eventually gets separated and mature into new yeast cells in the case of a binary fission. Special asexual reproducing structures are seen in fungi as well as in algae. Now, what are these uh, special reproductive structures which are uh, seen in the fungi? Some of them are zoospores, conidia, buds, etc. Of course, more number of uh, special reproducing structures are there. Aplenospores, uh, hypnospores, many are there, but only very uh, important ones uh, we have displayed here. So, zoospores, uh, best example is a clamidomonas, which is a microscopic material structure with flagella. So that makes the difference between one and another. See, in zoo spore, the motility will be there. This is the gamete means or the spore means. A pair of flagella will be there. The biflagellated zoo spores they are. Now, sometimes you may be getting the zoo spores in this way. See, the flagella are attached laterally and the, um, the form in pointing out to the front. And another one pointing towards the uh, back. So, and again, a single spore may be having more number of flagella also. It's called a sinsu spore. Sinsu spore. Sometimes they are also quadriflagellate. Four flagella may be there. So, different type of uh, zoo spores uh, you get. Conidia. Example is penicillium. Here the exospores are produced by division of a conidia 4 basipetal order. Older spores are away from stigmata. Okay. So basipet there are two methods. What is known as an acropetal and basipetal. Here you see they are using the word basipetal. Now basipetal means towards the base. If the Older ones are at the base and then the younger ones are towards the tip. If, it is, if the arrangement is in this way, it is, you call it as an acropetal order. Acropetal. Acro means, acro means tip. So, the older ones produce at the base and the younger ones towards the tip is called acropetal. Now, if it is the other way, the younger one at the base and the older ones towards the tip, if it is in this method, then it is called as a basipetal. Basipetal. Okay. Petal means towards, basal means base. Towards the base is the meaning of the two word. So here the conidia are producer or the exospores are producer in a basipetal succession and in the case of a uh, hydra you see it is uh, producing by means of what is uh, called as a uh, buds that you will be able to see clearly in the 
Next slide, of course. Here you see, this is what is called as an hydra. Um, it comes under the seal integrator in the animal kingdom. First one is a protozoa, orifera, then seal integrator you are getting. Now, this is seal integrator. The very, very, very small primitive organism is a hydra. The number of tentacles are the top. Here the hydra is reproducing by a very simple method. It is just put, putting forth a small bud. The bud grows. And when the bud is growing, it is developing the tentacles once again at the tip. When it is mature, this gets severed or detached from the mother. The young one gets detached from the mother. And then the young one swims and goes away after getting detached from the mother. So here the method of reproduction is very simple. It is just by means of what is called as a budding as it is in the case of the yeast. How the where the um, method of uh, vegetative propagation or, or propagation is by means of budding. There also. Now sometimes what happens uh, the reproduction is uh, taking place by means of what is called as a gemule. Surviving they are also sometimes called as a surviving parts. Surviving part is another name for gemule. Some people pronounce as a gemule or a gemule. Okay, fine. Can do it in any way. Which uh, a few marine sponges and uh, many freshwater species produce uh, by thousands when dying or produce in atom by freshwater species. It is an asexually produced mass of cells, internal buds that are capable of dividing into an animal similar to the endospores. So, gamete produ production you get in a bryophyte also sometimes in the plant kingdom. In, there is a plant called uh, Marcantia in which uh, there is a, what is uh, called as a gamma cup will be there. So, if this is the Marcantia a plant then you will be getting what are called as uh, these are called the gamma cups and inside the gamma cups you will be able to see the gamete inside each gamma cup one to I mean many sometimes hundreds of a gamma will be there in each so these are all some of the very interesting methods of uh, uh, reproduction in the lower organisms then fragmentation is another very common method of uh, multiplication fragmentation or colonial fragmentation in multicellular organisms is a form of asexual reproduction or Cloning in which an organism is split into fragments, each one develops into new individuals. Cyanobacteria, molds, lichens and sponges are very good examples of uh, this category. See, uh, when, uh, let us imagine there is a pool or pond or a lake uh, in the periphery of which you get a lot of uh, plants, algae and other things are growing. And when buffaloes are going, when goats are going, and then when they are walking on that, the plant get automatically detached. Particularly when uh, you get a herd of animals uh, uh, going inside the pond. All these multi, I mean uh, very small organisms, uh, the colonies, it gets uh, fragmented and then divided. Now each fragment is able to give uh, rise to a new colony. So colony formation is uh, mainly due to what is uh, called as a fragmentation. So, fragmentation is a very common type of uh, reproduction in the lower organisms. Uh, for example, let's imagine this is a filament of alga. Now, it gets uh, by accident, it gets uh, divided into four or five bits. Now, each one is uh, capable of uh, giving rise to a new plant. So, this method of reproduction is uh, very common in the lower organisms. Then budding is uh, once again in the case it takes place in the hydra which I have already explained it to you. Now we are going to the next slide. Here vegetative reproduction is a type of asexual reproduction as it does not involve two parents found in higher plants by vegetative propagules. So the term propagule is uh, very important including modified uh, root stem and leaf. It is by a part of its body other than seed. Structural unit in the place of a seed called propagules. 
Vegetative propagation, as I was just now discussing to you, is a natural as well as artificial. Now, natural method, once again, it uh, involves a root, stem, leaves, uh, the other organs of the plant. Once again, the root is uh, divided into tap root, adventitious root, modified roots, etc. Now, tap root, the example is Dalbergia sisu, and then Populus, then Guiava, Muraya, these are all the examples in which the um, adventitious buds develop which grow into the new plants. Okay, Muraya is Muraya Koinagi, is a, what is known as a curry leaf. In Tamil we call it as a curry vapulai. Talbergia, it's a very big tree, you know that. Then Guiava, it's a common plant. All of us know Guiava. Okay, Tamil we call it as a koya. Now, modified root, you get the tuberous roots. The best examples are sweet potatoes. Buds on the root develop as leafy shoots here. Now, this you see a beautiful slide showing how uh, the roots are uh, developing. Here you take a plant and then you just bend the plant and then when you just pluck it to the plant from this portion actually new roots will be produced here you will be getting the new roots coming out and then when this uh, young plant is uh, coming this will be severed you can cut off the young plant from the mother plant this becomes an independent plant and then the mother plant remains as an old one here, this is a method by which a new plant could be very successfully produced uh, with the help of uh, from a mother plant. Okay. This is a beautiful mechanism of vegetative propagation. Some stems are used for the um, method of uh, multiplication as I was uh, just now describing to you. Modification of underground uh, subaerial and uh, aerial stems are there. Underground stem, they are non-green perennial, it stores a reserve food material, then propagate vegetatively and adapted for perennation. Perennation means for living longer as a meaning. The tiding over the unfavorable climatic condition is called as a perennation. Okay? It gives rise to aerial shoots during favorable conditions. Under unfavorable conditions, they remain dormant. You know, see, when a plant is uh, coming across uh, unfavorable climatic condition, all its uh, life activities will be suspended. It won't be doing a very active work. It remains uh, dormant during that period. I, I, I hope you would have heard about the dormancy in animals also. Hibernation, sleeping period, and then like that. See, these are all, once again, during the unfavorable period, they remain dormant. But when the food is uh, very uh, plentifully available, when the, uh, what, when the plant is getting very good amount of water, very good amount of uh, uh, sunlight, and then very good manure, then it vegetatively uh, producing a number of plants very fast. Now it all depends upon how much nutrient it is getting, the natural propagation. So, four types of uh, uh, propagations are there, rhizome, tuber, bulb and calm. See, each one with example we are going to study. First one is rhizome, the best example is uh, gingerbread. English it is uh, called as a ginger. Ginger officinale is the full name. In Tamil we call it as inji. Horizontal, it is horizontal with the nodes and internodes. They produce a aerial shoot from the nodes above and adventitious roots below. See, here you are able to see the small young ones coming from the potato. Potato, this is a sweet potato. This is the potato. See, how the new young ones or the plants are coming out by the vegetative propagation. Calm. Best examples are Colocasia, Amorphophallus, Amorphophallus campanulatus, then uh, Colocasia is there, Alocasia is there, there another plant is there, Alocasia, 
then they are popularly called as a yam they are popularly called as a yam the common english term okay so they are condensed in a form of a rhizome growing vertically short stout and fleshy more or less a round in shape you must have heard about the karnai kelangu a very common one you must have seen so that is a condensed one and also it is a circular in shape and then it bears one or more buds in the axil of a scale leaves which grow into aerial shoot so the next one is a bulb since it is in the shape of a bulb this is called as a bulb uh, best example is allium sepa another good example for the bulb is allium sativum Allium sepa is coming under the tunicated bulb because it is covered by a number of coverings one over the another. Tunica means covering, and the other one is a naked bulb. So, what is a bulb? It is a the st here the stem is a short, reduced, and disc-like, without a food storage, completely surrounded by fleshy leaf bases of the scales. They are short stems bearing advantageous roots at its base. new plants are developed from the axillary buds of a fleshy scale leaves then the tunicated bulb as i was just now telling you you have got the uh, tunicated bulbs scaly bulbs etc bulb here the bulb is covered by few dry scales forming a membrane is a covering called a tunica in the case of the scaly bulbs lily for which the lilies and the garlics are the examples the leaves are small they are scale like and only overlap at margins no outer tunica is there for this that makes the difference between the tunicated bulb and scaly bulb see this is a example so this is onion from the roots are produced here and then this produces a with the help of the adventitious buds new plants are coming here you see a yeah, leaf is able to vegetatively propagate from the margin of the leaf the young new plants are coming so the leaf is also acting as a sort of a propagating organ then you get the example of a tuber the exam best example is a potato they develop from swelling end of underground branch they are large bearing nodes and these are called as the eyes of the potato for example this is the potato then you could have seen certain structures like this on the surface of that this is these are nothing but the nodes and uh, when you cut the potato each one containing a small eye you will be able to see one plant is coming from this this is called these are called the eyes of the potato eyes represent nothing but the nodes they represent the node so when you take a potato then cut it into small pieces small bits but make sure that each bit is containing at least one eye and from that a plant will come when it is put under the soil then some of some of the subaerial plant or stems subaerial organs they also they are able to produce uh, plants and the best examples of that category you get in the stolon offset sucker and then the runna so these are here the plant uh, is uh, they got a very thin stem or sometimes a uh, thick in the case of the run uh, stolon it is a very thin in the case of the runna the the character differs from one to another but almost all of them are able to propagate vegetatively and by means of a quick mechanism so i have given the example for each one here the stolen the example is a strawberry it grows horizontally and bear nodes and end nodes it's produced just below the surface of the soil offset the best example is a pistia and acornia acornia and pistia pistia you call as agasa tamarai and acornia you get uh, both pistia and acornia they are water plants 
they grow luxuriantly in all the ponds when you go to the pond you will ne you will never fail to see these plants they are very common plants in the uh, pond environment there are very good examples of the hydrophytes and they vegetatively propagate to give rise to the younger plants very quickly then aerial stem you get in the case of the dioscoria dioscoria very calm i mean good plant this is a dioscoria different species of a dioscoria is there and then uh, uh, you get it uh, mainly in the forest different uh, very big uh, dioscoria plants we have seen the uh, the um, tuber will be very very big sometimes it may come to about uh, 50 to 60 kilos the tuber will measure such a type of dioscoria dioscoria as we have seen and then pineapple, they are also able to vegetatively propagate. Perical multicellular or fleshy buds in the case of the axils of the leaves, in the place of the axillary buds, they shed and then they fall on ground and grow into new plant. The leaves, as I was just now telling you by using a um, photography, the best example is a bryophyllum and uh, the Tamil name of this plant is a very beautiful it is called as a cuttipotal kutipodum cuttipotal kutipodum when you just take the leaf and then tie it you get a number of plants coming out of that that's why it is called by that name okay the best example is a bryophyllum here the leaf will be very fleshy it stores of food material and then if it is just uh, you throw the plant in one corner of the house from that a fleshy portion a number of plants will automatically come so the example is bryophyllum now, by certain artificial method also, we are able to propagate the plant. So, they are called as a cutting, layering, and then um, you get to what is a grafting, different methods are there. As I was telling you, only some are very successfully practiced by the um, people who are vegetatively propagating the plant. First one is what is called as a cutting. Here, a portion of the plant, portion of any plant organ is used for vegetative propagation. <coughs> Mostly, they are using the stem. They, first, you have to, optimum length should be there for the cutting. See, if the plant is very, very small, then you can't do it for a cutting. And then the diameter is also a very important age of the plant. And then, seed it to be uh, taken into account. Uh, age of the plant and the seed to be taken into account. Now, I just uh, give you the examples are sugarcane, rose, bohine villa, moringa, hibiscus, thespicia. <coughs> now, moringa, it's a Tamil, we call it a murungai, hibiscus, everybody knows. Thespicia, you know, it's a called a Persia tree. And then the cutting and the layering in the case of uh, rose is a very common plant. Sugarcane, how it is uh, being done, I just uh, explained to you. So, if this is the sugar cane and uh, these are the nodes of the sugar cane, these are the nodes of the sugar cane, you could have seen from the lower nodes, you could have seen the roots also coming. These are called as the stilt roots. Why you are getting stilt roots in the case of the sugar cane? Because it is uh, growing in a sandy or a uh, uh, loose soil, it, it helps the plant from not getting tilted and falling down. So, it, it acts as additional support to the plant. So, these roots they grow for, and then they anchor the plant to the soil. Okay, and that's how these uh, roots are helpful. Now, coming to this point, what happens when you want to multiply sugar cane, you have to cut it in this way. See how I am doing. This is cutting, this is the node, okay, and then here you will be getting a node, here you are getting the node, third cut will be here and this is the node, now this is the fourth one, here will be the node, then this is the fifth cut, this is the node, now each one is a called as a set, it is a called as a set. Now, after cutting the sugar cane in this way, you have to keep it only in the same direction. So, don't tilt, this is the node means 
you have to put all the sugar cane only in the same direction see don't change the direction because of the polarity okay and then in the soil while you are uh, putting this this portion should be just below the soil level and it has to be maintained same way you have to put the note should be in the soil because if you just change it other way because of the polarity the plant will not be able to grow so it it is a cut, cut in the cut and then without changing the direction you bundle it and then finally put it in the soil all of them should be in the same direction and then you will be after some time able to see the roots developing from the nodal portion and then the new sugar cane will be coming out so the sugar cane is multiplied by that method so cutting the portion of any plant organ is used for vegetative propagation but mostly stem only we will be using for that purpose okay as i was telling you sugar cane roses bahain villa moringa hibiscus and thespis are the best examples then rose normally you do by cutting sometimes by the um, layering also what is a layering <coughs> just now i was showing with another photography also see this is the plant so i got many branches let's say these are all the branches you take a long branch you take a long flexible branch and then you just bend it and then bring it now this portion you have to uh, scrape the skin you have to remove the skin if there is a epidermis then it can't produce the root you have to remove the epidermis let the tissues other tissues be seen and then if you want if you are a bit worried that this will come out you can put a little bit of weight over it now what will happen you have to pour water okay now after a few days you will be able to see the roots uh, get struck and then you will be getting the root after three or four days you can remove the uh, stone also no problem and then when you see that this new plant is uh, getting the water from this and it has a set its own root now you can uh, disconnect the young plant from the mother plant this is what is called as a layering in tamil we call it as a padiyam podrathu padiyam podudal okay this is uh, another method of vegetative propagation now we will go to what is called as a grafting grafting we do we normally in the case of a mango plants like a sapota etc uh, grafting means ottudal uh, ottudal we call it. so here two plants are taken see one plant is uh, called as a stalk and another plant is uh, called as a siam see only now this uh, grafting can be done only in the dicot that's a most important uh, fundamental thing it cannot be done in a uh, monocot plant that point i want to make a very clear because only in a dicot you will be getting the cambium because of the presence of cambium cambium is responsible for this so dicot can be practiced uh, i mean sorry uh, grafting can be practiced only in the dicots because of the presence of the cambium so here two plants are involved you are in fact uh, joining two plants together the plant rooted supporting portion is uh, called as a stalk upper portion of the plant of another plant is uh, called as a siam so stalk and the siam now you will be in the perhaps in the next slide in a picture you will be able to see it uh, very beautifully how it is uh, being done <coughs> see this is the cuttings you take the cuttings and uh, here if you just uh, remove the epidermal skin you will be able to you have to put uh, the outer covering the roots will come from this here you have to put the soil you have to put the soil and then just to cover it cover it you can cover it with a cloth or leather or a polythene bag and then give some um, I main portion to uh, add water also here since uh, i mean uh, water is available here here water is available here here the roots will be formed this is called air layering air layering the previous one which i was uh, discussing was uh, called as the ground layering 
here you are this is the ground layering here by is a grafting you take a bud a small bud is taken and then this small bud is grafted to another plant this is the main plant the mother plant and then from one plant you take the bud and that bud, bud is put in another plant so this is what i have shown here in this photography or in the picture is a bud grafting you can do the grafting in different organs you can do the stem grafting root grafting bud grafting in yeah, grafting could be done in any method okay so this is the diagram to show the uh, cuttings how cutting is done this is air layering this is a ground layering this is a grafting bud grafting Now, importance of vegetative propagation, why we have to do the propagation? First one is a perpetuation. Here, the perpetuation of desirable features of a selected plant either by whole or by they are their uh, pieces. It is a rapid, easier and less expensive method of a plant multiplication which have poor viability or prolonged seed dormancy so we go for vegetative propagation sometimes we do propagation for mixing the two characters in when there is a grafting for example <coughs> when you take uh, two plants uh, and then uh, graft say there is a mango plant is there and in this mango plant a variety the fruit is large but at the same time it is a sore it's not a sweet you get another mango variety b here the fruit is a very small but at the same time it is a very sweet now you see each one has got its own desirable character here the fruit is a sweet but here the fruit is a large but at the same time they have got no market value because the sweet is a sweet with the fruits are very small nobody is ready to purchase it by giving a huge amount but at the same this fruit is a large but it is a so so when if you are have if you can have a fruit or a plant which gives a large fruit as well as a sweet mango it will be having a good marketable value so commercially this will be going to be a very viable one so what they are doing they take a plant mango plant a and then uh, graft it with a b sometimes when it is being grafted you get both the characters so this is a main aim of a grafting you want to bring two desirable characters in one plant see that could be done by the sexual reproduction also sometimes you take uh, two plants of a desirable character but there it is a bit difficult it may happen or it may not happen but here it is a sure when you take a two plants and then graft it together it will be getting a combined character so normally we do the grafting with this a so perpetuation is a one very important character and then it is a rapid easier and less expensive the method of a multiplication which have poor viability and prolonged cdd cd dormancy then what more are the beneficials of the <coughs> grafting or the vegetative propagation it helps to introduce plants in new areas where seed germination fails to produce plants due to change in soil and environmental conditions plants producing a small quantity of seeds mostly propagated vegetatively for example these are two points are very important in certain cases the seeds will be having what is known as a, a very very hard coat or a hard covering will be there in the seeds and they will be having a dormancy period will also be very long sometimes some seeds have to undergo a period of rest for about 6 months 9 months 1 year certain plants certain seeds germinate only after a very long dormancy period okay this is uh, once again a, a problem in the plants and again some some plants they produce uh, seeds but the quantity will be very less only very few seeds will be produced 
so to overcome all these uh, problems the plants which are producing a very less number of uh, seeds plants in which the seeds are uh, having a very longer uh, dormancy period in all these uh, plants vegetative propagation proves to be a very beautiful mechanism for the survival then fifth point is a uh, uh, only means of uh, propagation in plants like banana seedless grapes rose and rose and uh, jasmine that have lost their uh, capacity to produce the seeds a beautiful point see have you ever heard of a banana being cultivated with the help of the seeds banana for generations together we say that it is a uh, multiplying only with the help of the vegetative propagation ja rose also jasmine all these uh, plants they vegetatively propagate for many hundreds and hundreds of years as a result of that they have lost their capacity of a uh, seed production okay so the these plants is being or being used for vegetative propagations for generations and generations so uh, vegetative propagation has become the most successful method of uh, reproduction for these plants now <coughs> preservation of a good quality of a race is uh, possible only by the vegetative mechanism Uh, because uh, when you uh, mix uh, two plants by the sexual reproduction sometimes uh, there is a uh, danger of uh, the good qualities are being lost so if it is a vegetative propagation and if you find a race to be extremely good the best way is to vegetatively propagate and to retain the good quality in the plant itself then retention of characters and hereditary potential as a plant as a as a parent plant not possible in plants raised from seeds due to genetic variability whereas this is a possible in the vegetative propagation so uh, these are all some of the very important points that we have to keep in mind as a very important uh, good qualities uh, or a good beneficial points for the vegetative propagation now that gives you a very good idea very good uh, uh, mean uh, complete idea about uh, the topic vegetative propagation as i was just now telling you reproduction is a very big area very big topic in botany as well as in zoology reproduction we are uh, we are going to uh, study in four or five hours more than that okay so vegetative propagation i was uh, covering to you today and uh, in the next class we will be uh, studying about the structure of the flowers and then the andesium gynesium how they sexually reproduce so that's what we are going to pass on to the next class bye goodbye if you got any doubt very well you can contact me for your clarification thank you